festival. In this video, we will be analyzing the bog trip scene in Ari Aster's Midsummer, narrated by me, Roshi McCamalloy, and Virginia Cooley. Unbelievable. Welcome and happy Midsummer. Skoll! What time is it? 9 p.m. Danny and Christian are a young American couple with a relationship that is on the brink of falling apart. But after a family tragedy keeps them together, Danny invites herself to join Christian and, her, and his friends on a trip to a once in a lifetime midsummer festival in the remote Swedish village. What begins as a carefree summer holiday in the land of eternal sunlight takes a sinister turn when the villagers invite their guests to partake in festivities. Danny and Christian soon begin to realize that this is a this wanderlust of happy seems to have dark secrets in their so-called customs. As the film progresses, the two realize that, as we are also realizing, that they are in danger just like their relationship. I was most excited for you to come. Can you feel that? The energy coming up from the earth? The editing is a key aspect in conveying exactly what the main character, Danny, is experiencing and involving the audience in her experience. The scene moves slowly and the camera movements are smooth. The slow pace of the scene reflects the main character's physical feelings of wonder and bliss. It's subtle, but the surroundings, the trees and the mountains in the background slowly move in and out as if they're alive, mimicking the character's slow breaths. As we cut to the shot of the tree moving, the sound of the wind and her breathing increases in volume. It cuts back to her seemingly relaxed, but then suddenly her head rolls forward and her breathing's cut short, indicating a serious change in her mindset. From here on, the pace of editing quickens, cutting more rapidly between shots. The director chooses to use a fast-paced tracking shot to follow the character as she frantically walks away. As we follow Danny from behind, she talks to herself, attempting to reassure herself that she'll be okay. Her breathing also picks up in pace, creating an atmosphere of increasing anxiety and panic. At this point, the audience can tell that she is very in her head and begin to feel feelings of anxiety along with her. The overlapping sounds of laughter adds to the hysteria and paranoia. An ominous soundtrack begins to creep in and the effects in the background become ever so slightly more extreme, conveying the sense that the character is spiralling into a bad trip. As soon as another character interacts with Danny, she snaps out of the trip for a short moment as if rejoining reality. The pace of editing once again slows for a moment until Danny walks away and begins to panic again. Thank you. I'm sorry. Thank you. Stop it. Stop. Fuck. No. The foreboding soundtrack creeps in again as she runs for the shed. Once in the shed, the soundtrack then dissipates for a moment, leaving her in the dark and silence. The flicker of light revealing the ghost of her sister behind her pushes Danny over the edge as she flees from the shed into the bright, blinding outside. The soundtrack rushes back in stronger than before, with high-pitched, sinister violin string plucks adding to the unsettling nature of the scene. Aster uses the blinding daylight as a smooth transition into the next scene. How long was I asleep? I mean, we found you here like six hours ago. <laughs> the director wanted to make the warping effects as subtle as possible to make the scene seem as close to a real experience as possible. Towards the end of the tracking shot, face warping and the movement in the trees become more evident and the disorientation that the character feels becomes more extreme. The sounds of breathing are evident throughout the film, 
From the short, sharp exhales of the Harga people to the anxiety-filled breaths of the characters in times of increased adrenaline. Later on in the film, during a dance ritual, the main character's fast-paced breathing can be heard over the intense and ominous soundtrack of violin and drums, raising the anxiety in the scene and reminding the audience of her previous experience in shrooms. Once again, the warped effect in the background is used, further letting the audience make the link that she has been drugged. The back to the land, self-reliance, and other healthy aesthetics are all put together with all the smiling white people in their pretty folk costumes. They are so welcoming yet so vacant. Everything from the green hills of the compound to the flowy choreography contributes to the slow growing sense of entrapment. With its tenuous flow and push-ins and push-outs through the camera and angles that seem to be tightening its grip on their visitors. As shown in the Mayflower dancing scene, the trip aesthetic is continually intensified by movements of warping and fading features. Though we are in a natural setting, the view still is felt to be uneasy, and the fact that we as the audience aren't even sure along with Danny herself what type of game or what is going on by the way the pull in and pull out of the cameras are. Color grading wanted to make people glow, but in a very subtle way. With getting its rich, vibrant pastel colors, it helps to make the whites a bit creamier and prettier. This is the contrast to the usual aesthetic of a horror movie, with their more dark, exponential aesthetic. Midsummer's fairy tale look lulls viewers into a false sense of security with bright whites and floaty camera movement. This concludes myself, Virginia Cooley, and Roshi McCann Malloy's Anatomy of the Scene video essay on the psychological horror film by Ari Aster, Midsummer.